I don't like. The past two weeks have been very difficult for me. Uh, let me just say this. When you sometimes preach in this way, um, you are sometimes touched with a feeling of his infirmities. Now, what that means, for those who might not understand, you almost take on the characteristics of the individuals that you're ministering to so that you can relate and be able to translate to them what God has. Well, this past two weeks has been nothing more than a, a, a grawling, a miserable time. Can you say amen? <laughs> Isn't that exciting? From excitement to gloom and doom here. But this will be one thing that I think that will help you. I don't always, uh, when I'm with the Lord, any, anybody ever get with the Lord sometimes and he tr starts to talk to you and show you things and you think, well, this would be good for so-and-so. This would be good for that person. Then all of a sudden you hear a still small voice saying, it's not for them, it's for you. Has that, has that ever happened to you? Okay, and so what this is, I want you to take this from the heart. God is speaking to his church here at New Covenant. This is perhaps where we are, and I'm sure it is. God, for him to come in and do a radical change, must first change the heart. And so today, this will be something I hope that will make you very upset. I hope you go away very much uh, in a state of mind that you have to think about this the rest of the week and, and sometime with disdain. You probably never heard a minister say that, but I'm saying that so that it would rent your heart and that you would make a, ch a decision to change. You know, people don't change until the situation gets so drastic that they have to sometimes. I pray that that would not be the case that so that you can, before that even comes, amen? Before that even comes, you can make it, you can ward off a problem by listening to God. Jesus walked perfectly as a man, anointed by the Holy Spirit, and walked perfectly because he obeyed God. He obeyed the Father. He was able to uh, avoid and get away from situations that in any other case, in any other man, would have fell. But because he, ob he obeyed God and followed God, he was able to become victorious, not in one situation, but in every situation. If you can put that up there right now, we're going to look at uh, be wa beware of the wandering heart. This is part two. This is it. I don't think I can take any more than this. Amen? I really couldn't. I told the Lord, these two, two services would be enough, Lord. Otherwise, I, I would, your, all your people would die. <laughs> And so this is a, a message that I hope, again, perplexes you, challenges you, and that you would understand this is all of us. This is every person here. This is not meant for a person. That is, it is meant for us. God is dealing with us. If you would understand, I mean, this is not the message here, but it, it's true. I'm, I'm kind of prepping you because it, it's really a hard message, Okay. And what God was wanting to do is that when he reveals who he really is like, God is loving. God, but if you really get, he, he's also intense. He's very intense. He, he, you know, you think of organization, you think of structure, you think of demeanor, you think of personality, you think of everything that God is. God's very intense. I mean, to run the cosmos, to understand not only the natural, but the supernatural world, both worlds, both eons, God understands order. God understands perfection. God understands what it takes. There is no play with God. There is God. You know, we here in our puny little stinking little mind sometimes think we have it all together. But we are nothing. We are like not even a, amoebas next to who God is. We are insignificant in, in understanding, but yet God loves us. So Based upon that, but I want you to understand the intensity of what I'm about to tell you because it's going to reveal where you're messing up, where I mess up, where we mess up so we can get straightened up to what God has for us. So let's pray. I'm sure you're excited about it now. Say amen. amen. Father God, I thank you because I'm not here to mess around. I'm here to obey you. So God, teach us. Show us. If something hits us, Lord Father, let it be 
understood it was not meant to, to de- demean a person or pick on anyone in particular. But, Father, if it does fit the individual, give them the spiritual sense to take it for what it is so that they can become what you are wanting them to be. So, Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and understanding to know you better, that the eyes of our under and our eyes would be enlightened to know the hope of our calling, and that, Lord, you're here not to put down but to pick up. Lord, you're not here to... to, to to discriminate or to put down. Lord, Father, you're here to lift up so that we would not have to go through problems. For surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without forewarning his servants. So, Lord, I thank you for forewarning these people so that they can ward off sickness, ward off disease, ward off divorce, ward off problems that might be on the way that the enemy try to bring so that we can put a halt before it even gets even near our door. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. This prophetic, prophetic spirit is so strong on me, so if I am here and I happen to fall over, just let me go, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Beware of this wandering heart. We start off with this scripture here. If I can turn this on, that would help. And it says here in Psalm 32, verse 2, Blessed is the man in whom the Lord sees no evil and in whose heart there is no deceit. Now, God wants us to know that he has given us the ability to choose our own destiny. How much would that be worth if you had to pay for it? How much would that be if you had to go out and and try to buy or sell this? How much would it cost to have this wonderful choice to choose our own destiny? destiny. We are here in America. America is noted for the land of the free and the home of the brave, that we can choose our lives. That's what this nation was founded on, founded on the Judeo-Christian principles of which we know and understand. God himself destined for us to have that, that will in our life. It's, a, it's called free will. And so what we have to understand is we have the ability to choose and to do what God wants. And if we're going to be blessed, we have to make, here it comes down to it, right choices based upon God's word and the spirit of the Lord. I mean, that's there. That's why you're here today. That's why God has, has brought you here. It's not here to tickle your feelings, and I'm not here for that right now in these past two weeks. So bear with me. This is not a normal kind of a setting here. We're here today to understand that God has a great design for you, a great purpose for you, but you must choose that purpose. He will not choose it for you. He has not predestinated it for you. Although he foreknew, he then therefore predestinated. He knows the choices you're going to make. So here today, he gives you the free will to choose that, to go in that destination, in that course. And I want you to know I want to make the right. I'm not talking about religion here today. I'm not talking about New Covenant here today or the Catholic Church or the Methodist Protestant churches of America. Or I'm not talking about any of that because all of that is good. Thank God for the different denominations. Thank God for the different flavors that we have in in our Christianity. I'm not talking about that, though. I'm talking about a relationship not some man-made do's and Each church has their own thing. Each church makes up their old rules of what you can be like and what you should be like. But what we need to follow is not religion or man-made things. And sometimes we get stuck in that. I'm talking about something higher than that. I'm talking about the word of God. I'm talking about following what thus saith the Lord. A lot of people don't even know what that is. A lot of people don't even spend the time to get to know what that is. That's why the Bible does tell us emphatically to study, to show ourselves approved, to see a full value. That word approved in the Greek actually means that you are of the full weight, that you're not counterfeit and that you're not half loaded or, or halfway or half cocked. You're fully loaded in what God has for you. You're to study to get that measure. You're to study to get to that place. You're to study to get to that anointing. You're to study and pray and get yourself prayed up so that you're ready for the day, ready for the week, ready for the month, ready for whatever the devil might come for you because greater is he that's inside of you than he that's in this world. God wants you to understand that. 
Now, last week we found out that there were people in the Bible that did wrong things. Yet, God did not hold it against them or judge them for it. Abraham, for example, as you remember, he slept with his servant's wife. His wife's servant. That sounds good. I mean, it was not, you know, he probably enjoyed that in the flesh. Sin is fun for a season. He did that. He had a problem thereafter, and still we do have a problem because of that. Jacob, the heel catcher, he cheated, he stole, he lied to get his birthright. Moses murdered a man. Rahab was a whore, a harlot, and she also lied purposefully to the governmental authorities and several other favorites of God who did wrong in the Bible as it is recorded, but God never judges them. Now, I'm not saying that you can sin and do wrong. I am not. I'm an advocate of what God wants, as you as a Christian need to be. We, if we sin, we are to admit it, quit it, confess it, and get it under the blood. That's what 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 tells us to do. I sin. I hate when I sin. Anybody hate when they sin? Say amen. I just can't stand it. I mean, it's just repulsive to me in my spirit. In my flesh, I battle all the time. And God knows that you're not perfect. God knows where you are. So, but I'm, what I'm saying to you that God does look at something else. God looks at something as believers now, not sinners, not people that don't know God, or people that are constantly rebellious. I'm talking about people who have, have done wrong, but God yet looks at them and says, okay, I know where their heart is. God looks at the motive. God looks at the direction of our heart, the consistency of our heart. I want you to get this full text here, if I could. And it says this in Psalm 32. The first verse goes on and says, Blessed is he, that's who we are. Blessed is he who is, has forgiveness in, for his wrongdoing. Can you say amen? Thank God. You don't know how blessed you are. You don't have to go to hell. Say amen. I mean, when is the last time you heard that word in church? Amen. Hell where people go who disobey God, and that's where he doesn't want you to go. It wasn't made for you. It wasn't made for us. It was made for Satan and his fallen angels, but those who choose not to follow God and receive the free gift of eternal life, God has no choice but for you to send yourself there. God never sends you to hell. You send yourself. And then it says in verse 2 and in verse 1, it says, and whose sin is covered. It's covered. It's covered. Blessed is the man in whom the Lord sees no evil. And here's the real clunch of the script. And, and whose, in whose spirit there is no deceit. There's no deceit there. There's nothing that that person, yet they, have, they, they are trying. You know, you know, when a person tries, you can't condemn them for trying. Little Johnny in third grade that was me, say amen, had problems with a lot of problems. And you know that I flunked third grade? I did. My teacher kept me back. I don't know if they even keep you back anymore. Do they keep you back? Because it might hurt their feelings. The little snowflakes can't handle it. And I remember they kept me back. I remember they put a dunce cap on me when I was in third grade. I can vividly remember that was the day I decided I'm not going to stay like this. I can remember it. I said, I'm going to college. I'm going to make something of myself. Okay? Hallelujah. And so it's important. You know, there's nothing wrong with a little spanking when they need it or a little correction. It's, you know, listen, it is wrong when everybody on a stinking team gets a trophy for just showing up. Come on, there's winners and there's losers. You've got to learn how to take it and get it. You've got to get it. You've got to get it. Hallelujah. I'm sorry to pick on you. That's okay. You need it. Hallelujah. So we need to understand here today that God is wanting us to understand that the heart. He looks at the heart. Last week we looked at what this covenant marriage relationship that we have to explain this. In a healthy marriage, how many thank God they have a healthy marriage? Hallelujah. You better have it. If you're not, correct it. Say amen. Thank God. You're here. You can correct it. You can get it right. I mean, not every marriage is perfect. Say amen. See, I told you you wouldn't like this message. Hallelujah. 
We looked at this marriage covenant and it explains in a healthy marriage, uh, one of the spouse, if he do, she does something wrong or he does something wrong, because they know each other's heart, it's not a big deal. I remember when my first, my wife, we just got married and I was used to getting calls all the time, okay? Tell if I'm going to pick on myself. I'm not this, I have problems too. I'm just, this is something that this came to my mind, okay? Hallelujah. I remember she wouldn't call me. And she would go out shopping, and, and, and because she stays up later than I do, I go to bed at 9.30, 8.30, 9.30, say amen, hallelujah, and I'm up at 5 or 4 or 5, and I just like that. I'm just, you know, and she's out shopping at 10 o'clock, and I say, my God, woman, at least call. At least call me. Let me know where you are. Say, listen, people, uh, would you work together as husband and wife, say amen, hallelujah, a little call. We'll do you. Amen? I'm all right. I'm shopping. I'm not, I didn't spend that much money. Oh, that's the best thing. Say amen. <laughs> but once we did that, now we have, now we know, but we know each other's heart. We're not mad. I wasn't mad. i like, what are you doing out there? What are you going to do? Who, do you, who are you looking at? You know, that kind of thing. And so we knew each other's hearts. I mean, we understand. You don't have a problem with a person like that, that marriage is healthy. Or if the guy, you know, you know, if the guy doesn't take out the garbage or doesn't cut the grass that one week. I mean, I don't know any wife that does that other than Dodie. Say amen. She's the best. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, that, that, they don't get mad because they know the heart. You can let go of a lot. It covers a lot. You're covered a lot because of a healthy heart. There's no deceit in that. There's no, you didn't do it to do wrong. You just messed, you just know, you didn't even know, or you just, just messed up. I mean, but you know, honey, you know my heart. I didn't do that. I love you. And that's it. Amen? Come on, guys. Get with it a little bit here. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, this is real. You're going to have issues, but then sometime over time, it could be years. It could be months, it could be years, it could be decades of, of problems building. Problem, maybe something happened, something really irritated you, something that you saw, something that you did, something that you kept on, and something that you start, you as a person start to get frustrated. You start to get discouraged and you relate. Maybe the sex isn't as good as it was. I mean, that's true. Maybe there's something wrong. Maybe she's not as good looking as she is. Maybe you're just not good looking anymore. And, or you just, my God, you look at each other in the mirror in the morning, you wonder, who is that? Say amen. You have to love one another. Hallelujah. Because you change. How many have changed since they got married? Let me see. Hallelujah. Do you still look the same? Some of you are really lying right now. I know I changed. God, I changed. Used to be handsome. Say amen. <laughs> well, that's, that's good. I just wanted to hear that. That's all. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. But say over the time, then a problem comes. You know what, what happens when you get frustrated? You start to look for things to bring relief. Hear me. And that's where you start getting into problems. And you can start drifting, getting off course, and, man, I'm no longer happy, and I don't have that feeling anymore. I don't have that joy. My God, I just don't feel it anymore. I'm just not, my, I just don't, I, is this all there is? Is this it? I mean, do I have to go through life now like this? So in your search for, for a, a move of some kind, you start dabbling, and you start getting wandering when, in other areas. That's where addictions start. Not, you know, you can be addicted to something and not be called a drug. Then all of a sudden, you, may be, you might be another person. It could be uh, sexting. Nobody knows. I delete it as fast as I get it. It could be alone in your room, you know. I mean, the devil's really got it made today. I mean, we get in. Did you ever see anybody to go out today and watch how many people are like this? And you don't know. You don't even know this. If you don't have, you got this. Amen. You don't know. 
I want the glasses. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> They're out. They cost $1,100 if anybody wants to bless me. Say amen. Hallelujah. I just love technology. But the, you don't know. And we're all taken up. And then you have this relationship started. You start to get this, and it could be something really starts soft. But then that person finds out. And then when they do something wrong, do you think that the other spouse now who knows what something's up, found out something, do you not think that they're going to be upset? Absolutely. They're going to be upset. That could be a big problem. You know, the difference in this situation is the heart. The heart. You know, if you know the heart. I mean, one of the things I loved about Bishop when we first started Gin Pastor and we, start, we, knew, we knew each other's hearts. And all the pastors were together in their hearts. That's why we still have relationships 10, 15 years later or so. Because our hearts were knitted together. That's why I love Bishop. Because his heart was knitted with my heart. I know his heart. I know, and, and when I do, Bishop, I've done many wrong things, have I not? Bishop used to tell me, I don't know about that boy. <laughs> I didn't know about him. Hallelujah. But he, he knew my heart. He knew I was sincerely goofy. How many know what I'm talking about? The heart. You know, you know when you can, I, I just, I just, you can know when a person's heart is there. They'll look at you like, sometimes, I don't know what. But you know their heart's good. Are you all here today? Say Amen. We're talking about you and God, you and others, you and the church, you and your position, you with your children, you with your work, you and any parallel law works all across the board, all across. In every relationship you have, this is how it works. That's why I feel sorry for God so much sometimes. The heart is the difference, and he, this is how God determines things. Now listen. The hard times you go through will reveal the true motives and the passions of your heart. When you go through, you know, I've seen people in church, they get mad at one another or something happens. You know, you're going to have problems in church. I, do you think I like everything you do? Do you think I know that you like everything I do? Ask our board. I mean, our first year in our board, when we really came consolidated and really got serious, I cried every time afterward. Because, man, they would nail me and I'd nail, we would nail each other, and, and it was hard. But we got together in our hearts. You know, sometimes to get where you got to go, you got to go through some stuff and let it go. And it might not be so sweet because, but if you hang in there, man, as iron sharpeneth iron, you know, there might be some sparks that come up around about. There might be some problems that you might find. There might be some situations that you might not lick. But hold on, sister. Hold on because you're in the right place at the right time with the right people and the right God. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. You gotta hold on. I gotta, man. I just thank God I didn't let go because I, 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 man. Randy used to tell me, "You don't listen." I said, "Yes, I do." He says, "You don't show love." He says, "I, I shake the people's head at the door. What else do they want me to do?" You ready to go home? Say amen. Oh, hard times will reveal your heart. You know, God, thank God for the one that can take the tough stuff. Soldiers, warriors, our disciplined people. You can be disciplined wherever you are. I, I, unfortunately, I found that, and this is not all across the board, people who are military or police or uh, emergency things, those kind of people, people who gone to college, people who play sports, it doesn't matter. I, I found out mostly in those areas, though, that, that they learn, Michael, discipline. 
You know, they make the best. You don't have to do those things, but I found it in those areas. That's where you'll find it and most of the time. And that doesn't have to be. You can be disciplined in anything as long as you're disciplined. And you hold on, and you're able to sustain a blow. You're able to, to hold the course, even though you man, I, you've got my, you've hurt my, well, doggone if I hurt your feelings, tough. Can you take it like a man? Can you take it like a woman? Can you still walk with God because you love him? I'll never forget. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really care about feeding the people on Tuesday nights for once I hope because I knew what they were like. some of them were like. I knew they were cheating. Some of them taking and getting their, going from here and there and everywhere. I'm being honest. I love them. I help them. I'll never forget. I said, Lord, I don't know if I can minister to these people. I don't know if I can do it. I know what some of them are doing. Not all of them. I know what some of them are doing. They're cheating. I don't want to cheat. I don't want them to, I don't want to help them. How do I minister to them, Lord? How do I minister to those kind of people that I might have something in my, my heart or that hurts? And I'll never forget the Lord told me. He said, don't do it for them. Do it for me and I will take care of them. So I'll never forget. I went out that one time and I said, you know what, Lord, you're right. I'm going to start ministering to the people like they're you. And I started to do it, and all of a sudden, a love came on me that I didn't have before, a love and a desire that I knew it came from God and not John Pellinero, because John Pellinero has a heart that needs to be changed. And thank God for God changing me. You might have the same problem. You might not like me. Don't do it for me. I know, I know I'm kind of abrasive sometimes. Do it for Jesus. I really am a nice guy, but do it for Jesus. <laughs> to preach this kind of way, you got to be nice, amen? You really have to, because you, you can't phony this stuff. You can't fake it, okay? <sighs> so understand that your heart, if it's truly, sincerely, and going after God... God understands. He doesn't expect you to be perfect, but here's what he expects. He does expect you and I to love him. Amen. When you're in love with somebody, you don't mind spending time with them. This can heal any situation, any situation. By spending time and space with somebody or company, you grow in a relationship. If I were to spend more time with somebody, with anybody, if you were to spend time in space, that relationship will grow. Matter of fact, you actually love it. So if you love God, you're going to have to spend time with him in space. Well, I don't have time. Really? Really? That's just revealing to me your heart. You lied. You don't love him. Amen. You've got to intentionally do that for any relationship. What about church? Well, I, I don't know if I like anybody. That, well, you've got to have to spend some time in space they begin to grow on you. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. It takes time. I'll never forget. Amen. When I first saw Steve, I'll tell you, we had a time, and I'd look at, I, I said, Steve, I don't know about this guy at first. I'll never forget. We went down on, the, on a men's retreat, and him and Mark and I, where's Mark? Mark, and we rode together, and this guy is hilarious. The next thing I knew, we were from, from, where the heck are we? We were in Gastonia, Gaston, North Carolina. Next thing I know, we're all the way over there and in, in wherever that is, amen, Sevierville, because we were laughing our heads off because of the wonderful person. Never judge somebody. You're going to have to spend some time and space with them. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm a Yankee, and we, 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 we're sometimes weird. Say Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. You feel like a sore thumb sometimes in another place. That's the truth. But once you get to know, sometimes you've got to just spend some time and space with that person. Some company. You get to know them. You get to rub elbows. You get to talk. You get to, you get to talk, and, and, and you understand they're, they're not that much different than I am. They're, they're just like me. Hallelujah. You will do it. Separation, though, when it comes in a marriage or anything means you're no longer together. You've pulled apart because of some insignificant little thing. 
So the question is, how do you get that corrected? How do you heal this wandering heart? Now, this is going to hurt. This is where it really hurts. Because you're going to hear things that you normally don't hear in church. Hallelujah. So let's look at how this happens. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 11, Paul the apostle relates how the children of Israel really screwed up as they were going through the wilderness. They really, really messed up. But look at what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, and then God's news to the nations. It says, all these things happened as an example for others. That's us. And they were written down as warnings to us and for us. For, listen, for we live at a time when the end is about to come. It's about to come. How many can feel the urgency of getting ready for the coming of Christ? Jesus is about to come. Man, it's so perplexed. Well, these are examples, and these are things that we, we need to understand. These, these warnings are given to us not that we can go through them, but that we can avoid them. I mean, if you can avoid a problem, wouldn't you say thank you and not go through it? That's what's so, what's so important about studying the Word of God. You've got to understand what it says. You've got to follow God, and, and if you follow God, you can avoid a lot of problems, a lot of sickness, a lot of death, a lot of debt, a lot of everything that's bad. Hallelujah. We learn through obedience. We learn through the Word, and here Paul warns us, and God wants us to know that he hasn't brought the problem on your life. He hasn't brought poverty. He hasn't brought sickness. He hasn't brought those divorces. He hasn't brought bankruptcy. He hasn't brought you getting fired. We make our own choices. Hello. I said we make our own choices. And because of that, we have problems. Because of that, it's very important. Let, let me just tell you, this is not a game. There is a spiritual war going on right now. If our eyes were open in the spirit realm, you would see the demonic influence that's trying to come against you. Here's what it says in the word of God. Genesis 4, verse 7, it says, and, and it says this, If you do well, won't you be accepted? But if you don't do well, sin is lying outside your door ready to attack. It wants to control you. But you must master it. So here we have this problem. It's right outside our door. We're playing with it. We're playing with those things. Isn't that funny? Isn't that stupid? We're playing with the things that can kill us. And we don't realize who the enemy is sometimes. He's not there to play patty cake so you can go out and have a good time at the beat today. He's here to kill you. So you need to take this serious. This is very important. So Paul here in 1 Corinthians warns us about some things about how the children of Israel and how it relates to us, how we get off course and start to wander. Now, this is, you're not going to like this, okay? You're not going to like this. Say this out loud. I'm not going to like this. What happened first as they start to flirt and play with other things. This is called idolatry in the Bible. They start to flirt with other things. Well, that looks good. They look, man, that looks great. They start, if these are things other than God. They get in the way. Here's God, here's you. And, and, and these things, they get in the way. So you're now looking at that instead of him. And, and you're now going after this and instead of that because this gives instant feelings it, it, it feels good sin is fun for a season it makes you feel good as you do it and and then it has a nasty bite you start to you start to play with it you start to flirt with it you start to wink at it you start to call it up you start to look it up you start to play and there you are getting infatuated and and going into a, a relationship that you don't even want that's how it starts with anything you start to look at it i mean that's how you got married you start to look in the right way only in the positive sense you start to look at it you start to get attracted to it <laughs> help us jesus 
You know, wandering is a gradual thing. You miss a day of prayer. You miss a Bible reading. Well, I read my Bible a couple times. Then you hit and miss in church. How many know we love you? You start to hit and miss, and you got other, thi- other things, other things, other things. Work keeps you out. I thank God for people who work and have to work on Sundays. I know there are things when it's absolutely like nursing and stuff like that. Thank God. I mean, I know that's, there are jobs that definitely have to be worked. But in all honesty, if you don't have to, I change jobs. Say amen. I change jobs. This is saying get in church because it's so, your eternal soul, your family, how it turns out, your kids, how you mix with other things will not only affect you, but the environment around you. <sighs> you start to become intimate with it. You start to become intimate with these things. I mean, it's this playful at first, which leads to what is co- the Bible calls fornication. Well, I don't do that, Pastor. Yes, we might. It might not be physical. It might be spiritual, which could lead to physical. And you start to get fornicating. You, you know, the actual word in the Greek is point out, uh oh. Porn, oh, oh. Uh oh. Porn, oh, oh. And it actually means you give yourself unlawfully to sexual contact of another thing. You're starting to, oh, this feels so good. I know this is not fun, but I know every one of you go through this. Lord, this is so fun. It feels so good. Then you're really starting to get addicted. The binding of the minds come in play. Soul ties get in in place. You start to really get infatuated with it. Now you're really getting locked in and it's starting to pull you away even more. I mean, people are sometimes trapped there for months, for years, some for decades. Some never get out of it. Did you know what happened to the People, when they did that, they, 23,000 of them died that day. These are deadly things, okay? It starts off with the love. And then they start to do this other thing. This is, this is called tempting Christ. And I, I had to actually look that up and see what that meant. And you won't like it either. <laughs> but it meant this, that you, you're saying to God, yeah, I'm going to change yeah, 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 I'm going to change. Yeah, I'm going to change. Yep, yep, Lord, I'm going to change. Yep, Lord, I'm going to change. Five years go by. Yep, yep, I'm going to change. I'm really working. Yep, I'm going to clean my room. Amen. Yep, I'm going to stay away from that thing. Yep, I'm going to change. And what happens, this is really scary, that what happens is you, you don't change. You never really take it serious enough to change. One of the things I found in my life, because I have found many sins, huh? I remember journaling of how I did some things. I, I didn't realize I was doing it. And then over time, it took, sometimes it took a few months. Sometimes it, one thing took a year to get out of my life because I, I loved that thing. I loved Are you all hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth? I love that thing. But I had to let it go. I had to realize this thing is destroying me. This thing is going to kill me. This thing, if I let it go, you know, what's going to happen? God's going to let you know this. And then, then it leads to this other thing. You start to grumble and complain. My God, what are you complaining about? You start to, man, my life's not going the way it should. You know, I don't know why I, I try my best, but you're really not. Okay? I try my best, Lord. Why? Why, 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 why? 
Look at that church. They're not doing the kind of music I want. I can't jump with it. Oh, my God, I can't jump with it. Oh, me, oh my, I can't jump with it. <laughs> or this, that, there, and the other. And they start to complain. They start to grumble. And you know what happens? I really don't like to do these messages. I really don't. I really don't. I love you. But it is the truth. You know what happens to people that do that? I ought to look it up, and it it brings discontent. And it says discontent will destroy. You know, it's known as, in the Bible, if you look it up in 1 Corinthians 10, the destroyer comes. You know what that means? You keep on complaining, you keep on complaining, and you finally get what you're complaining about. Discontent will kill you. It'll end your life short. I've seen many Christians die early. I've seen many of them get sick with terminal cancers and situations in life that they could have avoided. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without forewarning his servants. Hallelujah. So here we see, and one of my scriptures that I hate really a lot is this one. Can you read it with me? (laughs) Can you read it out loud with me? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. What so man so, so he reap help. For he that sows to his flesh shall reap help. But he that sows to spirit shall the Yay. (laughs) Yay. Thank you, Chief. Would you lift your hand and say thank you for that part? The other part, hope. Help. So how do we keep wandering away? How do we get back? This is how it happens, what I just told you. You start to you start to idolatry, then go into fornication, then go into tempting Christ, then go into complaining. And then by that time, you're, you wandered, you backslidden, you went away. Here's how you get back. God continually warns us not to go that way. Say amen. So here's what he does. He shows us a relationship that you can see. It's found again, and thank God for marriage. Look at for this reason it comes. For this reason, a man shall, it's a, it's, it's a type. It's an example of how we're supposed to be with God. A man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. And they shall no longer be two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let none of us separate. Let us not pull away. Let's not pull away from the spouse. Let's not pull away from our our beloved, beloved friends, our beloved church, and especially to our loving God. God wants us to know that he has put that example for us. Marriage is that symbol. And God wants you to know that he wants us to be one with him. Matter of fact, that is the prayer of Jesus in John 17. Make them one, Father, even as we are one, that we're no longer two, but we're one united in marriage and covenant to God. That's what it's all about. If you really want to know the Bible message is that we're married to Jesus. God the Father wanted an eternal partner for his son, and that's us. Did you get that? Hallelujah. So here's what we have to understand. When that attraction comes, you got to go away from it. You, know, you never wonder why. Did you ever wonder why opposites attract each other? Did you ever wonder why? How many wondered why? Let me see your hands. Only a couple? How many know why you are attracted to an opposite person? Hallelujah, this is really neat. Why? That's true. Janice is really opposite to me. I'm opposite to her. I mean, she can read and understand everything by just glancing at it. It would take me forever. She can remember names. She can remember places. She can look at 
things and just photographically see it. She is kinder. Amen. I, she's totally opposite, and I'm, I'm attracted. Did you ever wonder why? Because we are opposite to what God is. And God loves us so more, much that we're now attracted to God, and God is attracted to us because he loves us so. You need to praise God for that. Say amen. He, he loves us so much. We're, we're opposites. And did you ever know that the longer you hang out with your spouse, the more you look like, talk like, and act like them. Say amen. Look at Dodie and Randy. They look like each other. Hallelujah. Joy and Mark, they look like each other. Say amen. Yes, they do. Hallelujah. Look at Bishop and his beautiful wife. They look like each other. They start to act like each other. They start to talk. The longer you hang with somebody, the more you become like them. You ever see people and in, in are out there in the world and they start to dress like the rock people, the rock concerts? They start to look like, act like, talk like, dread and all that kind of, uh, all kind of morbid stuff. I don't even know all the stuff anymore. They start to look like, act like, dress like. They become like. You become like the one you hang with. Who are you hanging with? I want to be like Jesus. And you shall be like him. And you shall see him as he is. You'll be just like him. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. Look, you lift up your hands and say, I'm just like him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're changing from glory to glory, from faith to faith. You're no longer you like you were. You're like him, becoming him. Hallelujah. In him we live and move and have our, that's good stuff right there. Say amen. That's good to know. So here's what you got to do to stay away. These are some of my favorite verses the Lord showed me these 15 years ago because I was going through things. These scriptures helped me get away from problems. Listen to them. Take a picture on your phone and get it in your heart. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 8. Stay far away. Don't even go near. I remember I was on the beach when I was watching this. Okay, we were on our vacation. And you ever see some people that get goofy and they get golf clubs out and they make miniature golf courses in the sand? I was watching this guy playing that. And he was playing putt-putt on the sand. And the longer and the farther away... He was from the hole, the harder the, it was for him to get the ball in the hole. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, the, the farther away you stay from your problems, the harder it will get be to get into it. And so I started, and I remember Bishop telling me all the time, whatever you feed will grow. Whatever you starve will die. And I started to think, man, I just got to starve this thing that's, Trying to, I got Holy Spirit, help me starve this. Help me to stay away. Don't even go near it. Proverbs 14, 4, 5, 15 says this. Avoid it. <laughs> Don't go in it. Turn away from it. Move on, boy. Go, 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 go. Don't stay. I love this one. Look at this one. This is so powerful. Psalm 13, 19, verse 13. Keep back your servant from presumptuous. In the Greek or in the Hebrew, it means keep your servant from sins you deliberately want to do. Do you ever pray like that? Keep yourself. Oh, God, help me. Let them not have dominion or control of me. Then I, I, then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of, of, of not walking away. Lord God, help me. Help me not do that. I would say this and I would pray. Lord God, listen. Lord God, help me, keep me away from such and such or this thing or that thing. Even though my flesh cries out for it, let it cry, Lord. Let it cry so I can get close to you. Amen. At least one's getting it. Say amen. Because you'll have to let, let it cry, Lord. And my flesh would get so mad. It would get so mad. What are you praying for like that? 
You'll actually hear your flesh talk. What are you doing? You know you want that Big Mac. You know you want that thing. You know you want this or that. Your flesh will love it. No, 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 no. No, I don't want it. I hate that thing. I love Jesus. And here's another one. Matthew 18. Now, this is how powerful this is. Y'all getting anything out of this today? From Matthew 18, 9. If you're, look at what Jesus said. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. Now, that's, not, that's figuratively speaking. It's talking about things. It is better, no, but this part is real. It is better for you to enter into your life with one eye, singleness of eye, rather than having two eyes, listen, to be cast into hellfire. I've seen people walk away from Jesus. I've seen people walk away from Jesus. Look at me. I've seen people walk. I'm quitting. I know you can't handle it now. Amen. Hallelujah. I've seen people walk. You know what it means? Cut it off. 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 Get rid of it. If you fail, Lord Jesus, I blow. Okay, help me again. He knows your heart. He knows you're trying. Okay? He knows you're trying. He's not there spanking you. He says, okay, listen, I want you to cut it off, though. Cut it off. Keep on doing it. Over time, you build up a resilience against it. Say amen. Sometimes you're instantly delivered. Most of the time, it wasn't. And so we need to turn. Everybody say turn. You turn and you will go. You know, t turning is the key that unlocks your heart. And it also unlocks God's. Lord, my heart, I don't want this anymore. I don't want to go away. I want to be on fire for you. Lord, you know me. It's John. You know I'm a goofball. Lord Jesus, help me, Lord. Help me to serve you. I turn my heart. Listen to me, and I'm closing. God cannot change a heart that he does not have. So you've got to have to give him your heart. I want your head bows and eye closed as they come on up. Don't let anything get in the way. There's these people in the Bible that they got crazy in love with Jesus. They were crazy in love with the Lord. Zacchaeus was one. He was a small dude. He wanted to see Jesus, but that didn't keep him back. He climbed up a tree to see Jesus. He wasn't going to let any obstacles get in his way. Mary was another one. She traded out her work in the kitchen with Martha just to get closer to Jesus. And, you know, Jesus said this to Martha, and he's saying it to you. Martha, Martha, you are worried about and upset about many things. But one thing is needed, Jesus says to us. Mary has chosen what is better. She wants to be with me. She wants to be with me. How many want to be with Jesus? The wandering heart. The only cure is come up and say, here's my heart, Lord. I'm not going to ask you to come up, but I'm going to ask you to stand up. If you want God to take more control, more control of your heart. And I want you to hold your hands like that in front of you. Come on, if that's you, to stand up. And say, here's my heart, Lord. I'm going to give you more of my heart. Just put it in your hands like this. Lord God. And I want you to get a picture of this so that later on tonight, tomorrow night, this week, you see you giving yourself in your heart. Here you are, Lord. Here you are. Here's my heart, oh Lord. Here's my heart, oh Lord. Here's my heart, oh Lord, you have it. I give it to you. Now lift it up high. I give it to you, Lord. I repent. I give myself. I give my all to you, Lord. Without you, Lord, I could not do it. I give you my heart, Lord. I give you my soul. I give you all that's within me. Lord God, I thank you. If you're away from the Lord, you know, he loves you so much. All the people in the Bible that were adulterous, 
God never went to them and said, repent. He expected them to come to him and turn back to God. God is expecting you to come today and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. In Jesus' name. Father God, here is your body. And I've preached the word, Lord. It was very hard for me, Lord. Because I love these people. And I know they love you. Lord, if there's any here that are drifting, Lord, I pray that we would be a support system to each other. That we would be encouraging one to another. And that we would be loving in all we do. Lord, let us know that if there's somebody here with a problem, we're not here judging them. I don't care what they've done. I don't care where they've been. Help us to know that you love us so much that you left heaven to come to earth for us. Help us to leave our things to come to where people are, that they may be blessed. We thank you, Father. Now lift up your hands one more time if you would and just thank, thank you, Jesus, for loving me. I pray this message has touched your heart.